Guadalajara is the capital of Jalisco, Mexico, the second largest city in the country, and home to cultural creations such as tequila and mariachi bands. It's a densely populated city of 1.3 million, with almost 10% being children under the age of 14. Nearly 70% of people are vulnerable to poverty or living in poverty conditions, which means very few families can afford surgical care for their children. The waiting list to get assistance from charitable organizations is impossibly long and heavily favored towards the most severe of cases. Enter Dr. Rolando Morales Jr., who for years has been working to establish a foundation to help children with surgical reconstructive needs, all in honor of his father. My dad was a, a medical sculptor at the Shrine and Burn Hospital for Children in uh, Galveston, Texas. He worked with surgeries pretty much every day. Um, he was the artist. He was uh, the man in charge of making all the silicone prosthesis for the children. It was a charity hospital and um, you know, my dad touched every kid for 40 years that came through that hospital where he worked. He gave his entire career to the, to the hospital the kids. So I grew, I grew up in the office, I saw these kids. I mean, some of them are friends. And I would go to the office with them in the summers when anybody would let me. And I was, you know, I was the, I was the boy in the, in the corner just making silicone ears and noses. Classrooms are coming through the office and, you know, to see me playing around with silicone and doing things my dad did. And I was 10, 7, and they're like, you're going to be a plastic surgeon one day. And I was like, I just want to be my dad. You know, this is one of my dreams I've always wanted to do, you know, whether, you know, dad was alive or not. You know, I was going to start a foundation and go back to my roots. I needed to go back to my roots and what inspired me. So I started my foundation about three years ago and um, in honor of my dad and my dad was still alive. Rolando Morales Sr. passed away peacefully in his sleep, February 13th, 2021. You know, my goal was to do it before he was, he, uh, he passed after his stroke. You know, he, he got 10 years taken off his life after his stroke. And um, I did everything I could to make it happen. Then we had COVID and COVID put a, a delay in everything for a few years, but you know, got back on the train and I coordinated with one of, the, one of my dad's bosses, his name is Michael Sergio. While I was working with um, Roland Morales um, Sr., I had the opportunity to, to meet Dr. Morales. Uh, I've known him for many, many years. <laughs> he knew me since I was a kid. He knew all the plastic surgeons. I, I got to train with them in my training. He uh, got in touch with me. Uh, and asked me if I could help him uh, get a connection to start an outreach program as part of his foundation to help children in Mexico. Hospital Seville de Guadalajara is one of Mexico's largest hospitals, providing 1,800 beds for patients. OR rooms two and six will be home base for Dr. Morales and his team. All right, so we're here, actually in the OR facilities. Great morning this morning. The team's really excited. Uh, we met the, uh, the team here that we're going to be working with. We got our rooms. We're going to be room at 2-6 today. So um, we got the cases lined up. Uh, we got some residents with us as well. And, um, you know, team effort. We're about to go get this done. We got 10 kids to do today. After almost a year-long fellowship under Dr. Morales, Dr. Brian Pfeiffer has proven himself to be more than just a talented plastic surgeon. The husband and father of four knows the impact he can provide to the kids and their parents. It's great. I, I love the collaboration, team environment. You know, we've got a lot of local surgeons and residents and med students that are going to be working with us today. So it's fun to, you know, teach them and learn from them as well. They, you know, they have a lot of tricks that we don't, uh, that we don't know. So it'll be fun to do it together. Known for her contagious personality, Dr. Bahar Abbasi has an incredible eye for detail as a plastic surgeon. However, her compassion for others and dedication to her craft makes her a perfect fit for this mission. Good morning. It is our surgery day today for the Morales Foundation. It is the inaugural mission trip, first one. Super excited to help 10 beautiful children, and it feels good to be able to get back after seven years now of being a plastic surgeon. The team will be assisted by current residents from the hospital 
led by Dr. Ariel Miranda, longtime friend of Michael's. Another iron burn. No. I introduced Dr. Morales to um, Dr. Ariel Miranda in Mexico. I, I was um, working with Dr. Miranda in Mexico previously through my connection with the Shriners Hospitals in Galveston. We are only a few in the world to take care of burn patients. Only a few. Not a lot of people want to. And that's the moment. And Morales Foundation is on the way. Mm, yay! Dr. Miranda uh, flew to Houston, met with uh, Dr. Morales and myself, and they immediately hit it off and uh, they began planning uh, this um, outreach program um, for Dr. Morales' foundation. We are looking for people and foundations to help with the burn problem around the world. So it's not only Guadalajara, it's all the people who need and, and we can do a lot of things together. We got some markings on the baby. We're gonna do some uh, little Z-plasty for a little hand contracture. Dr. Bussey has come up with a really good plan. Pretty simple, keep it simple. Always the goal is for function. We want function. It's um, so important for kids, especially with their hands as they develop. So anyway, baby went to sleep really, really calmly. So calm, so brave. All right, let's go to work. Dr. Abbasi will give this little girl better use of her hand by performing a Z-plasty. The Z-plasty is a plastic surgery technique that's used to improve the functional and cosmetic appearance of scars. Contracted scars can be lengthened by 50 to 70% with this technique. We got the release. So what we're doing now is we're gonna secure the flaps into place. It's called a Z-plasty. And the purpose of this is to increase length along a tension band, which is where the contracture is. So this is absorbable suture, so it's hopefully you're going to be able to stay in place. As soon as she, she released that, that band, you could feel it pop. And I'll be able to kind of open her, her thumb out more, almost immediately. It's just a humbling feeling to be here with the team right now. It took a lot for me not to cry. Sit tight. And black ointment, fluff gauze. We're gonna do like a little cold band wrap or like an ace wrap to kind of give, put her hand up like this. The surgery went great. We did three scar contraction releases. She's got full extension now of her thumb and her first finger. So, great stuff. Dr. Morales and his team put together gift bags for each child containing toys, candy, and necessary medical supplies for recovery. So we're getting her bag ready, um, just pretty much whatever she's going to be used for, uh, using for recovery. And some um, little goodies. Okay, so we're going to take the mom around so Dr. Abbasi can talk to her. Hi! Surgery is all done. <laughs> Look at this. Perfect. <laughs> there was a lot of emotions, a lot of tears. There was times where you couldn't hold back the tears, just not because you felt bad for their situation, but really because they were happy that we were here and we're happy that we can be here and we're happy to help them without having to ask anything in return. Daughter, so brave. No, didn't cry, didn't scream, so calm. Very perfect, her thumb is fully released. Yeah, so a couple of the procedures that I had in my room, you know, we, we split it up into two operating rooms. Dr. Abbasi was in one room all day and I was in one room all day and we split up the patients and, you know, one of mine was a really large congenital nevus of the face. Yes. 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 Yes.
I sent you the pictures sí. already. Siéntate, por favor. This is a very special patient, and they try a lot of surgeries with the standards before in another place. Yeah. You know, I covered probably 60% or so of his cheek. Um, it would have been a nice reconstruction to do, like a big cervical facial flap. And in the past, they had tried to expand his neck tissue with you know, something that we call a tissue expander so that they can then cut out this big lesion and, and move tissue up from his neck. Only the tissue expander failed, as they sometimes do. It got infected and extruded and was exposed. And so his neck skin became all scarred down as well, which was very unfortunate because, you know, that's a, we call it a donor site to, to give skin to the, the place where we would have cut it away. And so what we opted to do instead was um, something like, you know, what we call serial excisions. I mean, it might have been I don't want it to pull skin his, grafted. I don't want like it to pull his eyelids up. Right. The skin moves pretty well. You can undermine it some. Get stretch. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They're very stretchy. All right, my man. Okay. Okay. Does he have any questions? We just take as much as we can at one time and then uh, we'll come back in a staged fashion a year or two from now and, and try to take the rest of it once his healthy skin stretches out. But, you know, it was, it was very nice and, and fit well with aesthetic surgery too because we essentially made a, a facelift type incision uh, and lifted up a, a skin flap from his face and pulled everything back as if he were undergoing a facelift. We were able to cut off about half of, of the lesion or so. And so to, to turn in an 11-year-old boy, to turn a lesion that's this big on his face into something that's you know this big is, is much more manageable you know right in front of the ear so that was a case that was particularly meaningful for me uh, again I, I mentioned some of the other hand procedures that we did with some of the kids a lot of burn scar contractures in the fingers but to, to give them function and, and mobility to deepen web spaces so they can grasp larger objects I mean those are all things that aren't just aesthetic but those are you know really life-changing functional uh, improvements Number nine is all finished. Um, it was a young man. He had a burn injury to his foot with some hot oil, and um, he had some scar contracture of his kind of the back top of his foot. And so, what we did there is to remove some of the burn scar. And when you remove the burn scar, you can release everything. So now he can put his his, his uh, back of his toes are like this, and now they're like this. Okay, and that's where his injury was. His burn it was right across his kind of his where our knuckles are in our hand. We took a, took a piece of skin on his groin, a piece of skin of like, you know, so we call it an ellipse, and then we put it there. So now he has new skin in the area of the burn scar contracture. So this is gonna, his, where we took the skin, it's called skin graft, that's gonna heal just fine. It'll be just a small little line scar. And then um, the, the skin graft, it's called the skin graft, is gonna set into the new, new home. And he'll have brand new skin that uh, he'll have the function of flexibility again, so. Anyway, great case. Dr. Pfeiffer did an amazing job. I took one of the um, uh, Mexican residents through the uh, skin graft harvest. She's never done one before, so and that's why I'm here. It's to help teach, not to do the cases, but to hear teach, teach uh, the residents here, and then you know help obviously my fellows as needed. Um, but um, we've got one more, and uh, this young lady has a small congenital nevus on the back of her arm, and it's not very big. And so what we're gonna do is kind of cut it out. It's, um, and we'll close it called primarily. So we just cut out like an ellipse and then close it into a line. So we'll go very quickly. We're doing a local anesthesia. So she's a young, uh, an older uh, young lady. And uh, we're gonna give you a little bit of medicine to kind of help her chill out, relax a little bit. And then we'll do the procedure under local anesthetic. And we'll get her home as quickly as possible. So that's our last case and uh, things are going well. And uh, let's get the rest of the day finished. In all, 10 kids ranging from ages two to 17 were treated. Most of the kids had burn injuries, while a couple had congenital disorders. Between Dr. Abbasi and Dr. Pfeiffer, they may have operated on 10 children, but looking at their families, you can tell they affected so many more lives. You know, these two surgeons are amazing human beings. Um, I'm just so fortunate to have them with me here on the, on the mission trip. You know, it's a, it's a life-changing life experience, in my opinion, to, to do these things. And to give those opportunities to my fellows just means a lot to me. And that's why one of the big reasons I'm doing it. So, um, you know, hopefully when they get into their careers and they feel like they're ready to do what, you know, hopefully be inspired to do what I'm doing and give back and make, you know, do some good in the world. Um, that's kind of what it's all about. That's why I'm doing this. The surgeries are completed. 
After 10 hours, the team is exhausted, but couldn't be more satisfied about the results. Joy and happiness could be felt throughout the OR amongst the plastic surgery team, the patients, and their families. All right, that's it. Done for the day. Did 10 surgeries for 10 children. So excited. We're coming back next year. And uh, thanks to my team. Good job. <laughs> did it. We're going to see you guys tomorrow for the post-op appointments. Stay tuned. Post-op clinic. Day three. I've already seen some of our kids out in the waiting room, all looking great, smiles on their faces. So excited to see them. Is it, uh, it feels normal? Se siente normal? See? All the sutures will come out on their own. Uh, but I would probably leave those pins in for two weeks or so. Um, and then, you know, those can be removed in clinic. The splint I would probably keep in place for the same. I'm so grateful that Dr. Piper and myself, you know, we were here in this year where it actually came to fruition. And we hope that we have the opportunity to carry this as an alumni to come back and, and um, help grow this foundation even more. We're really proud of him. Oh. All right. Uh -huh. Just the Lord? Yeah. Uh, I'm having a lot of pain. Yeah. Looks good. Take these stitches out at three weeks. Oh. They're monochrome, but they're okay. like prickly. Oh. I needed the strength. What was that? Poner. Hey. Puedes poner. Oh, that's pretty good. Come on. And now, here we are, 2023. Um, we are here in Guadalajara, and Dr. Morales' uh, dream of uh, honoring his father through his foundation um, has become a reality. Wow. Dos. High five. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's When we first started, he brought this this idea up that he's always wanted to do this. So, for me to see it uh, flourish and, and come together and come alive um, is is heartfelt. I'm so happy for him and the foundation because I know this is just the beginning of so much more that we're going to do for these children in need. Thank you. Bye. I was so touched, I was, I became emotional actually, um, to see this little kid who grew up to be an incredible plastic surgeon, to bring his own team, to, to, to do good for people uh, who need help. And um, I was so proud of him, I, I was so proud of him. Dr. Morales, I am so honored and blessed that you um, allowed me to be a part of this mission trip. It was not only life-changing for those kids, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it, but it was very um, life-changing for me as well. And it makes me appreciate my life I have back at home so much more. So thank you so much. Yay! You can tell he really has a lot of passion and, so and compassion for children and for, you know, healthcare and for, you know, people all over the world. All right, looks muy bien. We removed about this much of the lesion, as well as this and this. Um, he has some stitches in his skin that need to come out in two weeks. Two weeks. Okay, we'll do, we'll do two weeks. You know, I mean, he's been a great mentor for me in that regard. Uh, he just, he really cares a lot about people, and you can tell that. And, and on this trip, especially, you could see it really shine through. Aha! El res. Take a seat. It was just an amazing experience being able to be part of it. And uh, Dr. Morales, I'm sure your dad is extremely proud of you. I put ointment on it two times a day. Le vas a aplicar esta cremita dos veces al día. Okay. He has a he has a message for for us. Wow. Tequila para todos. Wow. Oh, thank you. This is um, this is from him. 
He said, uh, thank you doctors, this is just a little gift from us, from my hometown, a Totonilco, Jalisco, much blessings to you and your family. Y muchas gracias, curando más de mí, ¿sí? Gracias, ¿sí? All the people in Guadalajara, everyone we've met, they've just been so welcoming, they've all been so happy to see us and just ready to, to have us help their community. So they've been great. For mom too, so oh, we, we removed the thick part of the wound here, the part that was making his toes and foot hurt, uh, and we took a little bit of skin from his hip right here, down to here. This is a little bolster that we tied over the top to really push the skin down to the foot. It's good, man. Pretty good. Dr. Morales is an incredible, incredible human being. I feel so close to him. Uh, because of what he, he has accomplished here. And, and um, Michael being here, and he understands, he understands you know, what we're doing here. He understands why, he, he, understand, he understands the inspiration. He gets it, so. So he's like my dad a little bit, because I've known him for so long. And for him to be here. Look at Michael, and I catch him looking at me. He would look at me like my dad. He really did. And I can't tell you how proud I am to have a dream and to make it happen for the people who understand and love you and support you. And Michael was that man. I am sure his father is, is looking from above and he's, he's been very proud of him. He doesn't know how much he means to me, but to make him proud, man, there's nothing like, like that as a son, to make your dad proud.